The death toll in New York City surged to more than 900 tonight. That's an increase from the 790 deaths reported this morning. That means throughout this afternoon, one New Yorker died almost every three minutes. Now, we do have to give you some encouraging news at this hour about the NYPD's counterterrorism chief. John Miller's wife shared on social media just hours ago. You see there that her husband is finally home from the hospital. We're glad to see that. Meantime, field hospital sites are already open in the city. The Javits Center has completed its transformation today. And a hospital ship, USNS Comfort, will start treating its first patients tomorrow. We have team coverage tonight. News Force Ravietta kicking off our coverage live near Central Park. That is where another emergency hospital should be operational tomorrow morning. Right. Stephen, Christian organization Samaritan's Purse is working with Mount Sinai to set up this field hospital. It's designed to treat the overflow patients. They've been working on it throughout the weekend, and this is just one of several sites working to help alleviate the stress on our city's hospitals. In just hours, the tents that fill up the East Meadow of Central Park will be filled with doctors, nurses, and patients. The work here will be to alleviate city hospitals overcome with COVID-19 patients. Where we're actually going to start offloading hospitals both here and Brooklyn, Queens. Um, those are the two hospitals that are really feeling the burden as much as any. Help arriving by land and by sea. USNS Comfort pulled into New York Harbor this morning, bringing with it 1,000 beds. It's a very emotional moment. Um, I went up on the roof here to watch the Comfort come in, and I had this incredible feeling of Peace. The floating hospital will mainly treat non-COVID-19 patients, while the newly opened Javits Center and other city hospitals treat patients with the virus. You're combining the tenacity of the, the, the people of the city of New York and then the Navy. More temporary hospitals are already in the works. The city's emergency office now says it plans to build a 350-bed facility at the Billie Jean King National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadows Corona Park the beds to help treat patients who don't have the virus. Existing hospitals in Queens are packed. Elmhurst Hospital being the epicenter within the epicenter. Lines to the ER stretch out the door. A doctor from that hospital tonight via video explaining the type of testing they are working on. We will soon be able to test. And by soon, I mean maybe by the middle of um, uh, April or sooner than that. We will be able to test people to see if they're actually immune now to this virus. The battle against the virus unfolding across the city. Both the mayor and governor still concerned the troops, the health care workers on the front line, are not fully armed with equipment to fight the growing number of cases. Everyone describes all the critical care units as war zones um, because that's what it looks like. Medical calls to 911 have hit an all time record here in the city. And perhaps what's more daunting to think about, the governor thinks we're still two to three weeks away from peaks in hospitalization, which means the number of calls, just like cases, will continue to rise. We're live in East Harlem tonight. I'm Ray Vieta, News 4 New York. All right, Ray, thank you. Well, tonight, the city's district attorneys are raising the alarm about the release of violent inmates. Last week, you'll remember the city announced it was releasing some low level inmates to thin out the jail populations and stop the spread of the virus. Well, now the local DAs say that despite their objections, some of the hundreds of people released are violent criminals convicted of sex crimes and domestic violence. In a letter, prosecutors say in part, even at this difficult time, our society must have the ability to save safeguard those who are incarcerated to avoid violating their rights or endangering the community. In short, we should not have to make release decisions that we know will put communities at risk. Now, we haven't yet received a response from the mayor's office.